Hobblemon with your creations. That's right, this is the number two in the series where I played through 100 days using mods and resource packs made by you guys that make the Pokemon mods so much more fun. From unique mechanics that the community has been craving for, Mega Evolution that has been restricted to servers so far but can now be used by you and your friends in your own world, to Fakemon packs which finally let me go back to the good old days of catching new and mysterious Pokemon. Since so many of you ask me what mods and packs I use, here is a full list of them that I am using in this video, so make sure to watch the whole thing to see what each of them brings to your experience. You can find them all on the Kalamon Discord or on Modrinth. Okay, day one, and I've spawned in a barren, icy plate. <laughs> huh. Well, <laughs> that's one new feature you've seen right away. I'm gonna be picking Totodile, and the best part about it is that it just casually hangs around on your shoulder. Which is cool and all, but we all know it should have been biting our head. Whoa, look at that! It's a Delta Scyther! Oh, oh, what? You kidding me? Wait, what just happened? No, Totodile! Totodile! Oh, oh my god, no, no, everything's just out to get me. Um, as you can see, Pokemon are actually fighting me back. Stay away. Okay, I'm just gonna die of fall damage. Okay, wait, so I gotta know, does Totodile actually work against other mobs like zombies and creepers and stuff? Because this would be insane. That thing's clearly after me, go. <laughs> wait, is it fighting back? It is fighting back. No, Totodile! Oh, you! <laughs> okay, so they do fight back, but Totodile was no match. This is thanks to the Fight or Flight mod, which makes it so that wild Pokemon will aggressively attack you based on their species, level, and some other stuff. And what's even better is that depending on their type, they can set you on fire, levitation, and much more. After experiencing the harsh reality of Pokemon in the wild, I had to gear up big time, and that meant catching more Pokemon so that they can defend me. But by the time I got enough Apricorns to make some Pokeballs, I had already passed up on some pretty weird stuff. Okay, um, let's pretend like that didn't happen. In some time, I caught my first Fakemon called Catmir. <laughs> Get it? It's a wordplay on Meerkat. It was a ground and normal type, which might seem pretty lame at first, but when you compare it to Game Freak's version of a Meerkat Pokemon, it's safe to say it's miles ahead. Can I use this on Totodile? What? I can ride on Totodile? I didn't think this thing. Oh, oh. It's a bit glitchy. Um, it doesn't look very good. No, no shot. I mean, is this thing even any faster than walking? I don't think so, because of all the bugs when you're like going down a step. You know, Totodile's a water type, so maybe let's see how it does in the water. Holy shit! Oh my god, this, this must be a joke! This thing is too quick. I then decided to go cave exploring, which was a whole new experience. Apparently, ghost types cause blindness, and I cannot tell you how much of a pain Ghastly has been for me throughout these 100 days. You're kidding me. Where am I? Oh! Am I really gonna die here? Am I? Am I? Yo, what is that thing? R Rock Aaron? That looks sick! It's like levitating. Oh, oh! No, 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 I can't see! You know what? L let's try catching it. Um, let's go for a crunch. That's gonna kill. No, it just survived. Rock sound? There is no such thing as sound type. It's a robotic worm? And it's not attacking me, which I am very thankful for. But damn, okay. Jesus. You can jump while the Pokemon is glitching out, and I for one look like a complete idiot right now. Yo, look at that Shinx! <laughs> look how cute it is, man. I can't do it, I can't do it, I gotta catch it. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. We got Shinx, baby. Ah, no, no, I am not gonna die to a Maractus. I'm not, I'm not gonna freaking die to um, Oh! It's a ground light type? Okay. <laughs> uh, this is turning out to be a really good tail glow that is massive. Maybe I can get my stuff back. Where is it? It's like around here. 2,000 blocks away. Okay, this is not any faster. Shinx, I'm sorry to say, but you're too slow. 
Oh, please. Yes, all my stuff's still here. <laughs> After struggling to stay alive, I started getting the iron I needed to fully gear up. And I gotta say that my squad looks fire. It has everything. The cute, the ugly, the confused, <laughs> you name it. Once I got back to the surface, I found a Pokemon village, and it had everything from a Pokemon center to the houses, so I decided to use this as my home, cause I'm super lazy to build one myself, and I also get free healers and PCs, what more could I want? This sort of Pokemon village generates thanks to Space Plum's Cobblemon Village resource pack, so that's the one that you're gonna wanna pick up. While I was training up the team, I got a random notification in chat that a shiny Pidgeot spawned nearby. And yeah, it, it was right. So if you want these notifications for shinies or legendary Pokemon, the mod is called Spawn Notifications. It's pretty good, but I feel like the coordinates give a bit too much away. Look at it, it's flying, it's flying. I need that, I need to fly. For some stupid reason, I don't know what I was thinking, but I decided to kill the shiny Pidgey. It was literally a golden opportunity, and I messed it up. And you know what's worse? I completely forgot that you could Mega Evolve it. This. A berry. I have no idea what type this thing could be. Maybe a bug. This caterpillar is a dragon? You gotta be nut in my butter. Spiro, help me. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is just too funny, dude. Okay, somebody tell me that there is something wrong with this Makuhita. If this is the state that Kabulmon's gone to, then I don't know what to say. Ooh, we got a few more diamondes. Oh no, Gasly, you freaking stay away from me. I do not need this in my life right now. Oh my god. Am I really gonna die here? Am I? Am I? Okay. Okay, at least I died close by, so maybe I can get back there. Oh. Okay. Um. Let's not even move a step. Um, where are my diamond pants? What am I even looking at? I need my pantaloons, especially against that monster. Like, what the hell? You expect me to go in my underwear? No chance. Get back here. It's like... Oh, 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 no, 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 no. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Pharaoh Slayer. Pharaoh Slayer. Is that even fair? End me. Just do it. Nike. That's right. Sponsorship. Now the reason I was persisting to go back to the Pit of Doom was to get diamonds, amethyst, and everything in between so that I could craft a bunch of experience shares. Since I killed a shiny Pidgey, my only option for a new flying type was this new thing called Sinair. It kind of looked like Tranquil or Unpheasant, but at least it wasn't a normal type like most other birds. Yeah, so the main reason I caught you was to fly. Can, can I fly on you? I can fly guys, that is so cool. The cool thing about this flying mechanic is that it actually takes your Pokemon's speed stat into account. So for example, flying on this thing is pretty slow cause it's a low level as well. But now I'm super quick with this more agile Pokemon. So so far I've been able to fly with my Pokemon, swim in the water, and travel on land all thanks to a mod called Cobble Mounts. So definitely grab that, it's really cool. Oh look at it, it's... Freaking Delta Lopony. Can you just give me a second to appreciate life and everything that I have to live for? Like, you piece of... Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Is it just me, or is it so basic to the point that you just love it? In the next few days, so many of my Pokemon evolved, but I cannot tell you how amazing Luxray and Luxio are. It truly embraces like the Egyptian theme, and honestly, it could be placed as a regional variant in any Pokemon game. Then there was a berry, which was a caterpillar that somehow turned into a snake. Yeah, I don't really get that. And finally, I was expecting an elegant evolution for Sinair, right? But all I could keep thinking about was them chicken legs. And then there's Rock Aaron, which I have no idea how to evolve. It's level 35, and the worst part is that it has it still has Growl and Tackle. Like, what am I meant to do with this thing? I found one of those ruined portals and was pretty much basically done. All I needed was like three obsidian, so I got all the stuff I needed and headed into the nether so that I could see what all new Pokemon I could possibly find. Although I'd have to say that the start or the spawn wasn't ideal, so I had to make do and like try to fly around, so I got on my Pokemon and, well, 
here we are. I was so sad from dying that I just needed some goodness in my life, so I decided to ask the creator of Rockerin how this freaking thing evolves, and it's the most obscure thing possible. Like, I would have never guessed it in a million years, but let's go do that really quick. Please tell me this is it. <laughs> yes, we did it, okay. Okay, whew. Um, so the way you evolve it is by defeating five others of its own kind. That means you have to go head to head with five other Rockerin, and the worst part is that you gotta do it with growl and tackle. You gotta keep tackling a rock type. I would have never done that. And now we got Barak, which is super cool. Like, look at how insane this thing is. It's like, I think the reason it's designed this way is because it absorbed the souls of all the other Rockerin it killed, and it just like gobbled them up. And it's not over yet. It learned Banshee's Scream, which is a custom move, and it's a sound type. This is, I don't know what the sound type is good against, but I don't, we'll just use it, because look at how cool this description is. If you're wondering which Fakemon resource packs I'm using, um, these are the ones listed on screen. And a special mention to Alacia's Fakemon pack, because that's what my team is mostly consists of. And I think the Pokemon and models are phenomenal. Go check them out. Now, there are two new evolutions, but I don't know... Oh, no, no, no. Ooh, we got a new uh, Stingray Pokemon, Ticknoir. <laughs> Look at these two, they're so goddamn cute. Honestly, I have no reason, I just felt like evolving Ticknoir, and somehow it went from a Stingray to a Tortoise, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess nothing ever makes sense in Pokemon. It's really interesting, because it has Heavy Metal as an ability, Heavy Slam, and Electric type moves, so this thing's gonna be power packed when it evolves yet again. Oh my god, even Kortois is learning Waterfall before Feraligator. Like, come on, step it up a notch. Like, do you even get it? But it's so bad because its strongest water type move is Water Gun. Why? Catmere is actually one of the more fun evolutions because it evolves into Mirogue, which has a stick ready to give me a good spanking. But that's not the point. The point is, its running animation is charging into battle. Like, that is absolutely phenomenal. Like, props to you, man. Okay, so I'm quite deep into this video, but I just realized that I have a Wonder Trade mod just sitting around. So we're actually gonna try and use it every now and then to see what all we can get. The first time I used it, I made sure to keep all my favorites in my PC because I wasn't sure what would happen, and I also decided to trade away Firo. After confirming it, I got a Fakemon that hasn't had its model added to the game yet, so it kind of ended up in its sprite form for my team. But I wanted something legit, so I tried again and eventually got Skeletone. This thing was insane, it was like a dead shark or swordfish in its bony form and was a water ghost type and on top of that was level 63 so you can get anything. Just a side note, when you use the wonder trade feature for the first time it might not have many pokemon in the pool of wonder trades so if you do want to regenerate or randomize everything in the pool use the command on screen. I kind of realized this later on but make sure you do this before trying anything. Beautiful like diamonds in the sky. Please don't get copyrighted. What is attacking me? Oh my god, I cannot see! Oh my god, you guys, save my dumb ass. What is happening? Where am I? Oh! What just happened? Oh my god. That was like the worst outcome ever. How did it go from me being blinded into a corner to me somehow getting onto my freaking flying type and swooping right into lava? At least we got some items back, so... Cool? They can't steal. You're kidding me. Are you telling me that's a Capsa kid? Holy crap. <laughs> now with all the times that I've died underground, I knew for a fact that going into the nether was a bad idea. But I did it anyway, thinking surely there's no way I'd die again. Right? No, there's nothing wrong with that. It makes perfect sense, right? You fall, you move, randomly, yeah. I mean, it wasn't all bad though. I found some really cool Fakemon, like this Jurassic looking Avalug, 
a ghost fire type lantern and I somehow put my two tiny brain cells together and figured out how to evolve Mirog. One of the things the mod really lacks right now are TMs, but there is this side mod called Where Are My TMs that brings them into the game. So basically it adds three new items to the game being a TM machine, a TM, and a TR. So first up you're gonna have to craft your TR or TM, but keep in mind that TMs are reusable and TRs can only be used once. So you basically put the TR in the machine and then you get this selection menu. It lets you choose a Pokemon's move. So for example, I'm gonna be grabbing Waterfall from Cortois, and now I have a TR for Waterfall. So I can finally use it on Feraligator that has been struggling to do anything useful because it was stuck with Water Gun as its best move. So you can make any TM as long as one of your Pokemon has the move. It's a decent solution until they've been officially added to the game. So what I want to do is find way more shirt. What? Wait a freaking second. Jirachi? At this point I was panicking because it was chasing me around and I just didn't know what to do. So I took it inside my house and then realized that the only way I was catching something this rare was with Dream Balls. So I used some of my precious diamonds and tried my best not to kill it. Which I nearly did. <laughs> yeah, luckily it just survived on 1%. This is literally my best odds. Yes! Oh, the feeling of actually winning something for once. It feels miraculous. What is happening here? After having caught a legendary, I didn't want to just stiff it in the box, never to be seen again. So I had the idea to make a pasture block and then let some of my Pokemon roam around. I was kind of curious if these Pokemon would defend me too, from like hostile mobs and stuff. And yeah, they really do. Oh! I got killed by a Joltik. A Joltik of all things! If you're enjoying the video so far, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. And if any of you want to support me, I also have YouTube memberships open now, which give you a few perks as well. There are so many Fakemon that I've found but can't talk about because we don't want to be here for two hours, right? Like there was this regional Sawaddle called Silk Loon, and my favorite being this fiery chameleon called Flamble. It had like this neon color changing thing going on, and it was just really cool. Eventually, I found the Creeper Pokemon too, and when I added it to the team, it said it was ready to evolve, so I was like, well, why not? Let's give it a shot. And let's just say, I'm terrified. Imagine that thing in normal Minecraft. Yeah, it is just casually having a seizure too, like, what the hell? And then we got Shellos, cute little Shellos, look at it. Oh my god, it is so... Shiny? Y are you kidding me, a shiny? And then a Shellos is beating me up of all things? Look how slow it is! Oh, there's a shiny, there's a shiny. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Too goddamn basic, but now we got Crabrawler? Look at that purple. It's got a smug look and everything, this is perfect! Come on, give it to me. Look, Rapidash is rooting for us too. Yes, that's another one in the bag. Wait, this was my first shiny? Oh right, I completely forgot that I slaughtered- Oh, no! Oh, okay. So we found Exeggutor, um, he he You're telling me that's normal for Alligator? Aren't you, aren't you surprised? Like what? I wanted to enchant some armor, so I went to the nether to gather experience, but naturally I was scared of losing all my stuff after all that has taken place. So I left pretty much everything behind in a chest. All I had on me was like four Ultra Balls, and I don't know how this coincidentally happened, but there was a freaking Victini just chilling around. So first up it was Jirachi, now it's Victini, and I only have three. Ultra Balls, so this is gonna be impossible. Um, Leaf Blade shouldn't kill him. Oh, 1%! I mean, if it doesn't catch now, then I'm gonna stand no chance, so... Please, just give it to me. Yes! We got a Victini, baby! That's what we're talking about! I don't know how I did it, but all it took was one Ultra Ball, so I was pretty happy. In the coming days, I did another Wonder Trade and got something called Zeroshin. It was like this dolphin warrior, which is basically a Zora, I guess. 
So one of the more important destinations in this 100 days is going to be the end dimension. Because not only will there be Pokemon from another world, but you can also find keystones that help our Pokemon mega evolve. So while I was gathering Ender Pearls, I found a really cool Pokemon that I was trying to get my hands on from the very beginning. Oh yo! Galideon? Did we find a wild one? I think we just... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I die... Oh my god. A Glideon, which is the evolution, the flying type evolution that I wanted but couldn't get, but it naturally spawned in the world. So, so now we can go for like a sleep powder, and it's asleep. Okay, so it is asleep now. Oh, look at that. It's so peaceful. And um, I mean, we just go for the dream ball, baby. This is this is the best shot that we have. I was drooling at the opportunity to get rid of the stupid flying chicken wing that was on my team. Cause now with Glideon, I got a super cool flying Pokemon that actually packs some power moves. Like it gets Thunderbolt, I Jump Kick, and even two custom flying type moves. But the best part was that it was actually super unique. Cause normally you see a flying type and you're like, oh, it's a bird. But it kinda had this flying squirrel vibe about it where it used its wings to glide rather than propel itself in the air. And this for me is one of the best evolutions I've ever seen, even by a fan-made person. Yo, look at it, it's freaking Charcadet. That's the first time I'm seeing it in Kalumon. Since I finished collecting all the Ender Pearls, I just need a few Blaze Powder, and it's very nice that my Pokemon actually help kill the Blazes. It makes it feel like a, a genuine interaction between Minecraft and Pokemon. So there are a bunch of Endermen that are gonna be after me, so that's pretty concerning but now we also have all these cool new pokemon that we can see for the first time and this is a regional elicate or something okay and then we got cacnea maractus we got a whole gang after us so <laughs> things are looking pretty iffy if you ask me that is absurd i like i like the burst there were so many new Pokemon which came from a fan game called Pokemon Xenoverse, but I didn't want to waste too much time and let the dragon kill me, so I began taking down tower after tower while soaring through the air with my Glideon until I finished off the dragon. Okay, so listen up. What I'm about to tell you is very important so that you don't get confused. So at the moment, I found two different Mega Evolution resource packs made by two different teams. So I'm going to show you them one by one, and please keep in mind that these two Mega Evolution packs have different mechanics in how you get Mega Stones and how you Mega Evolve the Pokemon themselves. And then upon reviewing it yourself, you can choose which one you want to use, but I do have a clear preference as of right now. So let's get into it. So the first resource pack I'm going to showcase to you is called Lacking Megas. So as of the time I'm recording this, Lacking Mons has 7 Pokemon that can Mega Evolve, plus a custom mega for Milotic. The whole basis is that you find these ores in the end called Prismatic Dust, and when you combine them with diamonds, it creates an item called a Mega Scrap. If you throw that item in the furnace, you can get yourself a Keystone, and then you can right-click a Pokemon with a Keystone to make it Mega Evolve. So the only problem right now is that I don't actually have any Pokemon that can do that, so I had to go on the search for one, and who better than the most annoying Pokemon in the game? Ghastly. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So, slash Wonder Trade, uh, number Uno, because I want to get rid of Magmortar, and boom, we got a pathetic love disc. Oh god. Oh god. It's so pathetic it can't even stand up. You see what I have to deal with now? While I was in the end, I made sure to get all the stuff I needed to craft Link Cables, because Gengar is a trade evolution based Pokemon. So once I had my Gengar, it was time to test it out. All you have to do is right click the Pokemon with a keystone and then it allows you to Mega Evolve your Pokemon from the evolution window. And just like that, we got Mega Gengar. So yeah, that's how it works and okay, I really want to see what's going on down here. Huh, so <laughs> there's nothing down there, but okay. Uh, that's besides the point. Yeah, so you can Mega Evolve your Pokemon using a Keystone, but there is another way within this resource pack itself, and that is the Mega Ring. So basically the Mega Ring is crafted with a Keystone surrounded by 8 Netherite Ingots. 8 Netherite Ingots, I don't think you know what that means, because I certainly didn't, because I spent the next 15 days just mining around for Netherite. Like you need 4 ancient debris to get 1 piece of netherite. So I mined 
for a long, long time and just got a few, so I had to resort to blast mining and I finally got it. If any of the devs are watching this, please can you try changing the recipe because it just takes way too long to get and I don't think people will be as interested, so um, that's one little tip for you. If you didn't notice, when you use a keystone on a Pokemon to Mega Evolve it, the keystone actually disappears. But the benefit of having a Mega Ring um, is that it's actually unlimited uses, or that's what they said anyways. So after I got all my netherite ingots, I crafted the Mega Ring, but the worst part was that it was glitched in the fact that when I used it on Scizor, it just disappeared. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do, I spent 15 days trying to get my hands on it and it just poof gone but not only is this resource pack good for mega evolution but it actually has a ton of other pokemon added like rose raid crocodile eternatus um it goes on and on so you might want to check it out either ways so the second resource pack that i'm going to talk about that adds mega evolution is called ascension megamons and this one has a more unique way of acquiring mega stones so i find it a little bit more fun as of right now, Ascension Megamons has 15 different Mega Evolutions for you to get your hands on. But the thing is, they're all Generation 1 Pokemon, so if you don't happen to like Gen 1, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I mean 15 of them, that's already a huge step forward. The basis for this one is that you have your unique Mega Stones, like the Aerodactylite and Gyarodosite, that work for their species alone, and of course the Mega Cuff. The Mega Cuff can be crafted with diamonds, glass, and a new block called Anisterite. So the way you find these Mega Stones is underground in pink geodes similar to Amethyst. And if you do have a map mod, you can find them pretty easily. Okay, come on, come on, give me the jackpot. Okay, we found it. Now just give me the Mega Stone, please. Wait, this has got to be it. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Raw Pidgeot. I, wait, do I have a Pidgeot? No, I killed the shiny Pidgey at the start of the game. Why did I do that? Why? I'm such a friggin' idiot. Oh my god. Where's the center of this thing? Or is it just. Oh, okay. Um. Oh. Oh, wait a second. That was not even in the inside. So there. You tell me there's some stuff in between this? I gotta mine all this out? Okay, I guess I'm gonna be here for hours. Yay, not. Okay, there's another one of those. It's it's the same one? Why? Okay, so I got two of them. Maybe one one of these uh, cavern things gives only one type of mega stone. Maybe that's what's happening? And yeah, that is exactly what is happening because in another geo that I found, I got like two or three Charizard I'd wise and nothing else. So you want to try and find as many as you can. So let's say I'm just riding Pidgeot and I get off for a second and boom, we got Mega Pidgeot. That is what we're talking about. No, okay. But yeah, so with the Mega Cuff, you can actually just right click the Pokemon and have it Mega Evolve. So the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you already have a Mega Pokemon using this method, then you can only have one Mega Pokemon at any time, just like the regular games. So if one of your Pokemon is Mega Evolved in your party, you're gonna have to unmega Evolve it to um, evolve something else. I'm saying evolve a lot, like I feel like an idiot, but you know, that's just the game that I play. After hours of searching and mining, I was able to get my hands on eight different types of Mega Stones, legitimately anyways, so it's time to show them off. And just for the sake of showing them off to you guys, I spawned in every Pokemon and gave them each of their Mega Stones, and as you can see here, all of them have fantastic looking models. There were a few issues I was having, although they don't really have anything to do with the mod itself. Like for Gyarados, I was able to fly, which means the riding mod didn't recognize that it changed to a dark type. And then Pinsir also had some issues, cause when you Mega Evolve it, it becomes a flying type, so you can ride in the air. But if you happen to change its transformation mid-flight, it kinda just walks around on that plane in the sky. So. If you want to trip your friends out, that's one way to do it. With that being said, I think this is where I'm going to call it quits. There was no real end goal in mind, but just more so to enjoy the Pokemon mod with all these new features that you guys have published. So, I'll see you guys next time.